Seriously, how long do you think they'll wait before they put a replica of the castle from the Magic Kingdom right between the two and the zero? Jesus Christ, if you're gonna subvert something movie, try working on these 36 seconds of f***ing logos. Hang on, this is ultimately a pretty shitty apartment, right? But there's a sick burner stove? That's like chef quality. Also, if he's trying to get a bunch of gas in here, why didn't DP turn on the last burner on the end? And now the f***ing stove controls are turned every which way. Rather than being on the maximum effort setting, we just saw Deadpool put them on. My point is, why can't this movie f***ing stove correctly? Just because you're a Deadpool movie doesn't get you out of a showing a love story through a photo collage montage cliche sit. Wolverine. Sitting Deadpool for narration is like sitting chocolate chip cookies because they contain chocolate chips, but I actually prefer chocolate chipless chocolate chip cookies. And we've got a job to do here, so narration. Guess what, Wolby? I'm dying in this one too. Yeah, but not really. Like, you're asking for an emotional payoff for multiple fake out deaths in this movie. At least Logan had the decency to stay deceased. I don't speak Cantonese, Mr. Well, I'm not even gonna attempt that. Funny joke, but did Deadpool seriously come all the fing way to Hong Kong without knowing this motherfucker's name? What kind of plan was this? And how long was he waiting in there? Is this really more effective than, say, jumping out from behind a tree? Or was Ryan just longing to relive his time on the buried set? Let's see Captain America do that. Dude, there are some great fing shout outs to other superheroes in multiple universes, but. Doesn't this one feel forced? Like, other than spraying the funeral with bullets, couldn't Cap do all the shit Deadpool's doing here? Sure, we are far enough away to not see that it's Wade doing some Deadpool dancing. But why are these guys right up front still cheering like they think it's Demi Moore from 20 years ago? Aside from the fact that these Jacuzzi Yakuza have caught a bad case of one at a time itis, why doesn't a single one of them have a gun on them? No one thought to bring a Jacuzzi Uzi. Also, despite that, I've got to give it up for the fing fight choreography in this movie. Jesus, who even thinks up fights like this? Dozens of severed arms, legs, and heads, but yes, please blur this man's giggle stick, because who will think of the children? That babysitter of yours is high as f right now. Damn, I didn't realize how much my Nana liked to party. I know we want to see all the bad shit action behind him, but how is this asshole supposedly running at top speed when the stuff behind him is happening in real time? Little, uh, cokey cokey, can't maintain an erection. And thus begins the annoying trend of the exact same beat from the first movie happening in the sequel. Remember when I kidnapped Bandhu and threatened him with great violence? Deadpool 2 expects us to remember the dopender F story from the last movie. Look, I've seen the first Deadpool dozens of times, and even I forgot that shit happened. You gotta grab those dreams, grab those dreams by the tip and make it rain. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means is a cheap and easy beat in a comedy movie cliche. Diarrhea? We can't be sure till I get the suit off, but uh, all signs point to yes. Man, Deadpool movies have as many poop jokes as a goddamn Shrek movie, and I am sinning that crap. Number one, it totally taints this franchise and is a stain on the logorrheic nature of the dialogue. And number two, it wipes clean any of the goodwill from the more intelligent humor it might want to dump on us later. Baby Factory's open for business. Oh my god! Oh, that's sweet. But like most superheroes that choose to procreate, you gotta wonder about some things. Like how much Deadpool's mutilated DNA would affect a fetus. Is he okay with potentially having offspring that is impervious to death? Does he even have sperm that could fertile- Oh wait, this totally means Vanessa's gonna die, so we won't have to think any further about this. You are not your father. I know we're trying to squeeze some substance into this sequel, but is this really what we're here for? If Deadpool knows he's in a movie, he should know that she's about to bite it, right? What about Bruce? Wait, did Deadpool somehow develop Spidey sense? Or did Morgan Freeman train him to do this by getting his ass kicked by Angelina Jolie? Considering Deadpool is extremely aware of his inability to die, wouldn't he do everything he can to push this fight out into the hallway to protect someone he knows is vulnerable? Instead of, you know, diving across a counter and ducking out of sight to give them more time to shoot up the place? Okay. Since this moment sets the entire plot in motion, let's break it down, shall we? First, even beyond the character says I'm okay, but then surprise, they are an okay cliche. Why is this final gunman waiting so long? Was he a big Deadpool fanboy and just couldn't attack until he heard a good cheese spreader joke? Second, Deadpool has time to recognize the look on her face, completely turn around and throw the spreader, but discount Anara doesn't have time to quickly drop to the floor. Third, Wade has wrapped up each previous baddie in the scuffle with inhumanely accurate knife throwing skills. But here he not only misses the vinyl organs, he completely misses the entire person. And four, I swear if I see one more person turn their head and follow a slow-mo bullet in a movie, I will force feed the entirety of Hollywood toaster strudels with mayonnaise icing. Holy <laughs> Sergey went exactly where Deadpool guessed. Like, he could have hidden in the hallway for a while and escape easily. Do we have to do these credits with all the in-jokes again? Isn't the Bond parody and the genuinely good Celine Dion song enough? That's like saying narration or roll credits or f***ing logos man in every video. Wait. You smell like sauerkraut left in the warm rain. This goes on for some time and gets progressively less funny. Just trust me. Are you pissing? Are you urinating right now? You're making the face that you make when you urinate. Hi, lowest common denominator. I'd like to place an order for one piss joke for Deadpool 2. Please hold. Sure, I'll hold. They're tied up in a complicated deal with the Despicable Me franchise. I thought you saw me with your ears. Man, it's hard to overstate how 
of these movies would be if anyone other than Ryan Reynolds was playing this character. I'm conflicted on whether this qualifies as a sin. Ah, f*** it. This movie rips off Groundhog Day even worse than Happy Death Day. Also, until he gets to the gasoline trick in the apartment, how the f*** would Wade expect any of this crap to kill him? He's clearly survived much worse, so this is really just for the audience. Hey, it looks like Wade made it to the Upside Down. Ness, there's something here I can't, I can't, I can't get to you. Are we really supposed to buy into this emotion? You can't spend three minutes asking me to take you seriously, and the rest of the time making dick and fart jokes while breaking every fourth wall in sight, he says, self referentially Blessed are the wicked who are yielded by my hand. I feel like the writers used all their supply of villain nuance on cable and said, f it to the rest of the bad guys. So is there the same fight between humans and mutants in this universe as there is in the X-Men universe? Seems like Deadpool and the other mutants are able to operate with impunity, with no resistance from humans. But here, they drop us into a mutant conversion facility with barely a mention of the underlying politics. Some ground rules well under our roof. Rule number one. But Colossus has the handbook halfway open. Did they seriously wait until the goddamn middle of the book to start talking about the rules? Also, pretty sure Colossus would have the rules memorized by this point. Especially, you know, the first one about not killing anyone. I said no touching. How long has Wade been here? He's just now getting introduced to the rules and meeting NTW and Yukio for the first time. But he's super well healed after having been blown all the way up. Doesn't that take a long time to reverse? And how does he even heal? We've never seen his parts reattach before. They just grow back. So did this body eventually sprout from his head? I'm just saying the whole aftermath of the catastrophic suicide attempt is way yada yada here. Hilarious bit. Truly a laugh out loud moment. But... Why? What are the X-Men doing in there? Why couldn't Wade hear or see them before now? Why wouldn't they want to talk to Wade anyway? One of the assholes who killed Vanessa got away. He means himself, so this is really just a slight modification of the pronoun game. And you know how we feel about that shit around here. Well, I'm gonna tell you what the big lie is toilet paper. Geez, between this, Interstellar, Thor Ragnarok, Unsane, The Third Wheel, and Team America, it's clear that Matt Damon would rather cameo for the rest of his career than train for another f***ing Bourne movie. The f*** is Colossus doing calisthenics for? Does his metallic shape really require cardio? Something wrong with the soap. It's fine. I just filled it. So this implies Wade literally jerked off into the soap dispenser, right? Is that the joke? And why would Colossus even use soap and water anyway? God, this movie definitely decided to go with quantity over quality for the jokes. That's a terrible idea. I'm really not ready. What's Wade's plan here? I know he's faking like he's found some heart and he's playing by the rules of the mansion, but is he really content with sitting around the house? I thought he wanted to be involved. This kid needs to be in the icebox, not here. Russell belongs in our care. Man, this sure is a casual conversation to be having while only several feet away from an out-of-control, fire-throwing mutant. Sure, Russell's in a temper tantrum, but why is he taking it out on the X-Men? They're the only ones that are actually trying to talk to him, and they're clearly one of his own. Despite the other two going straight backwards as a result of Russell's fireball, Deadpool somehow curves up into this window, just so we can get a super force Wolverine Ryan Reynolds joke. <laughs> this is the perfect way for Deadpool to knock Russell out of the picture. And it's a beautiful shot. Holy shit. That's awesome. Get a power restraint on him, now! So the human police have collar restraints for the mutants? Like, where do they get that technology? And if it's available, why the hell is the headmaster using that f***ed up throat device that clearly doesn't work? You let me down for the last time, mate. Jesus, can't we give Colossus anything else to do except try and fail to rehabilitate Wade? This is like the least efficient prison ever made. Why are the cells so far apart? Why is there so much room? It's not like they need to mitigate any mutant powers. That's what the suddenly convenient collars are for. My whole life, I've been waiting for someone to come and save me. Nobody's gonna sacrifice anything for me. Sacra foreshadowing. Also, this underscores my question about Russell's behavior outside the school. There were actual superheroes there trying to help him, and they were the only ones he unleashed on. I'm just saying that if he has this much insight, he'd be able to recognize an opportunity. Nothing worse than a pray to get away type guy. In case you missed the allegory about the mutant rehabilitation, Wade's here to properly smash you over the head with it. I've got tumors to grow. Vanessa waits. So is Wade planning on just dying or getting his heart right before he does? Because I thought that was the whole point of the sanctimonious house mom routine before this whole mission. It's nice to see some fresh faces around here. Yeah, and what's up with that? Even though they were arrested at the same place, why did Wade and Russell end up in the exact same cell? He's only 14. Don't they have a juvenile block at the icebox? Wait, they were just in a full-on prison fight and all they got was sent back to their fairly plush cell? I mean, aside from the rampant bullying and the unhygienic conditions, this shit ain't a bad place to stay. Sure, it makes a nice symbolic touch stone for us, but how exactly did Deadpool manage to bring this token sentimental token token in with him? Token. Damn, once you get inside this prison, apparently you can go anywhere. Guys, I'm pretty sure the movie's telling us that Cable killed this guy by breaking the f*** out of his arm. That was our cell. Yeah, but the doors literally just opened four seconds before this blast, so why are both of you all surviving and stuff? Convenient, easily short-circuited power canceling necklace is convenient. So you're from the future. I have three questions then. One, is dubstep still a thing? Damn, when was this script written? 
That hasn't really been popular since 2011. I'm pretty sure the last few minutes of this action sequence qualifies it as arm mutilation porn, and there's a good chance that it was secretly directed by David Cronenberg. Oh no, Wade has been injured. I totally care about this because he's never going to recover. Also, Cable's been spending all this time on beating up Wade when his primary mission is currently incapacitated and standing in the adjacent prison. Wade, how did Wade almost die again? He just hit his head on a rock and fell into a lake, which is really no worse than all the shit that Cable did to him back at the prison. Damn it, movie, what are the rules? The word, selfless, I literally don't know what that means. Mean. This is like the third I don't know what that means joke in the movie, and it just keeps getting dumber. Well, so after that big fight, I guess everyone escaped the frosty mountain landscape and went back to their corners. Wade went back to the bar, Cable back to his f***ing hotel room. He had already broken into the prison and f***ed everything up. Why didn't he go back and finish the job? He was right there. I'm lucky. That's not a superpower. Yeah, it is. No, it is. Wade's dismissal of this becomes a running joke, but is it that crazy of a notion, especially compared to all the other shit they're seeing today? Everything usually just kind of works out for me. Like 2008 Ryan Reynolds. I don't know who that is. God damn it, this is getting f***ing grady. Also, there's so many meta Ryan Reynolds jokes in this movie that I'm about to overdose. It made sense in the first movie, and there's a really good one at the end of this movie, but we get it. Self-deprecating, made some terrible movies, renaissance with this character. Can we move on? Let's go! We interrupt this Deadpool movie to bring you Con Air 2 Cruise Control. Disease. Maybe the con makes you more machine than man. Sure, sure, Cable's overdramatic, but no one in the movie is going to point out that the obvious Star Wars ripoff? They call Colossus on that Robocop sh Boy. Bring on the carnage, baby! Why is the mutant that spits acid wearing a guard that would keep him from doing so? I mean, I know Cyclops has his special glasses, but that's because his gazer beams are always on and need to be contained. But considering this guy hasn't even spit acid once, I'm not sure what this is supposed to do for anyone. This scene is f***ing amazing, and you can bet your happy ass I'm gonna be taking some sins off for it. But I do have to knock it a bit for the using ACDC's Thunderstruck in an action sequence cliche. Not to mention that only Domino actually uses her ability to stop her from dying, but no one else even tries. Like, couldn't Bedlam somehow manipulate the electricity around him to... Anyway, you see where I'm going. And for that, I'm only going to remove three cents. Also, this scene is goddamn awesome. Never underestimate a man with a mustache. Yeah, Just ask anyone in Brooklyn. Seriously, when was this script written? A lot of these jokes feel as stale as T.J. Miller's career. Just ask my own joke about it. Oh, God. I gotta throw up in my mask. We've already seen you behead and dismember multiple enemies with all sorts of copious amounts of hemoglobin spatter. Are we really supposed to believe that becoming queasy is even an option for you at this point? Yes, it makes for good cinema, but why the f*** would the prison transport the most dangerous mutants in the world straight through the middle of a major metropolitan area? Oh yeah, wearing the hood made you totally incognito to anyone you passed on the street. Another amazingly constructed scene, but I ain't taking sins off for this one, since Domino has already killed dozens of likely innocent bystanders in this scene alone. Discount Hulk. Also, is this really the most efficient drop-in for Cable to make? Like, wouldn't it be easier to pick a shorter building, or just be on the ground waiting for the convoy? He ends up running after them on the street anyway. Even in a movie this ludicrous, this works. Damn, any more of these shots and I'm gonna have to formally introduce a Deadpool gets hilariously maimed by a speeding vehicle cliche. I'd ask who you are, but you'll be dead in a second. Does anyone else think that Cable is extremely shitty at his job? I mean, his sole focus has been to kill Russell, but he keeps fiddle farting around with secondary characters and stupid one-liners. Wait, these convict containers aren't bulletproof? Then why aren't they already riddled with gunshots, considering the amount of ammunition that has been unloaded already in this truck? Why is this even possible? And have we seen anything in our time with Pee Wee Kiwi here to think that he would know how to do this? Knock, knock. Okay, I know we have to get the characters from point A to point B, but there were a lot of inmates in the icebox. Did they all fit in one transport, including a special cell for the most dangerous mutant ever? I'll admit it's mildly frustrating that Deadpool and Domino both have actual superpowers that completely short-circuit any attempt at they survive this. But, since Cable and Russell were on there too, they survived this? I'm gonna rip you in half now. I never thought I'd prefer anything from X-Men The Last Stand, but at least their version of Juggernaut was much more believable than this. Like, why is this character even here? Also, why is he so pissed at Deadpool anyway. There are plenty of other people around here to maim if he's just in the mood. I suppose there's some explanation in some rando comic from 1996, but they could also say something about it in the movie, you know? Dobbs, get me out of here, please! Use my arms as backpack straps! Help me understand how Deadpool experiences pain. We know he feels what happens to him, but then does it immediately go away? I mean, he's sitting, um, propped up here, completely split in two. Wouldn't that still at least sting a little bit? So everyone left Cable there and walked off, but they know he's trying to kill Russell? God damn, this movie resets itself constantly, with very little logical reason. Why is your hand so tiny again? That's not my hand. <sighs> At least 30% of this movie is copy-pasted dialogue from two years ago. It's like he's a Muppet from the waist down, but this time, you can see the Muppet's dick. Movie repeats the entire pitch meeting for the Happy Time Murders. You picked the wrong hold, future boy. 
Is that really necessary? The discussion in the writer's room somehow made it into the final script. I got two charges, one to get me here, one to get me home. Well, that's just lazy writing. Is it? Because it sure is all better than using the device for a million different moments. Nothing if you could go back and stop the people that took your girl, would you? Whoa, how does Cable know about Vanessa? He didn't even get here until after Wade had moved into the mansion. Deal. Deal. It's smart jokes like these that make this sequel far superior to the original movie. I really wanted to match, you know? I'd be a menacing team. This scene means absolutely nothing, and is exactly the reason extended editions suck. There, I said it. Throwing more nonsense in just because you can doesn't make anything better, he said, self-referentially. Say whatever it is you're here to say. What I'll say is, where the f*** were those guys during the whole X-Force vs. Cable fight downtown a few hours ago? They obviously show up at scenarios like that, since they were Johnny on the spot when Russell first went nuclear. Was there seriously no way to write these assholes back into the movie until now? It takes a while for Wade to grow his legs back. Then they have to go to the mansion on the way to the orphanage. So what took Russell and Juggernaut so long? Didn't they leave immediately from the crash scene to go kill the headmaster? Sure, they stopped at the big and tall place, but how long would that take? Did this movie even bother with a timeline? Pseudo-clever quips only cover up so much. Trust me, I know. It's at this point in the movie that the score consumes of a chorus repeating holy balls which is funny but really only in the same way as billy lighting his farts on fire in middle school okay so we covered blind al being blind deadpool breaking the fourth wall deadpool being maimed in various ways poop jokes and doe pinder being nerdy comic relief did we miss anything else from the first movie oh i almost forgot to impale dp in the head during the last act Whew. That would have been embarrassing. I know our focus is supposed to be on the Deadpool and Colossus romance, but why doesn't Juggernaut just tear Cable in two right here? We saw him do it to Red Dead Reprehension earlier, right? Big CGI fight coming up! Sure, but just because you call attention to it doesn't excuse that Russell. Bingo! Considering they've already been here at least five minutes already, when exactly does that whole arbitrary 30 second thing start? It's clear that Domino is a martial arts badass, but why? Her mutant power is luck. Why would she ever have to do any training of any kind whatsoever? You call me mother that's racist. Shock humor. That's how we do it in Mother Russia. Really? You take down supervillains by shoving a live wire up their ass and use a force blast to propel them into water? Man, I knew Putin was bad, but this is a whole new level. I got one more idea. It's just a really bad one. Even for me. Sure, but considering his last necklace just shorted out, how is this one even functional after everything Wade's been through in the last 20 minutes? You're gonna kill someone today? Then it's gotta be me. Yeah, but Wade just got hit with a massive blast of fire, then immediately put the mutant collar on. Shouldn't he be dying of the burn wounds already? The bear. It worked. But if the bear changed back because the future is different, doesn't that mean Cable would never show up here to begin with? Well, I'm gonna need some straws and Joseph Gordon-Levitt with Bruce Willis's nose to explain this Aren't I? Go to hell, time travel. You're the worst. Before I go... This happens way too many times, man. What are you going for here? Straight comedy? Actual emotion? Testing the audience's patience? I'm going with C. Oh, cool. Dead Wade looks exactly like that dude from The Proposal. Kiss me like you miss me, Red. Well, come here. I appreciate the effort to make this ending emotional, but given that this will all be undone in this overtly insubordinate movie, I can't get on board. It's like trying to trick yourself into having an actual orgasm when you're f***ing your cousin. You time-sliding son of a bitch. You did this for me? Why is Wade glad to be saved here? When the last time he went through this, he stopped Colossus from breaking the necklace and saving him. I guess you could say it's because he saw Vanessa, but he doesn't remember that, right? And if he did, why did he play dumb the second time through? A family. So, where are these assholes going? The threat is pretty much over, and they're walking away from the still-alive juggernaut. They end up back at the mansion eventually, right? Are they going for shawarma? Because I don't think you can fit any more into the post-credit footage. That was probably a bad idea. What have we done? Oh, I know. You've created a hilarious but totally unnecessary post credit sequence that feels like Ryan Reynolds indulging himself a little too much. Passion of the Christ, then me. We beat them overseas, where there's no such thing as religion. Remember the movie interview with the vampire? I want to. You're my Tom Cruise. And you're my Kristen Dunst. Kristen? Kirsten? I was fighting a caped badass. Then we discovered his mom is named Martha, too. In Star Wars, men are destined to become their father, and then have consensual sex with their sister. You need to just keep living. Thank you. Matthew McConaughey, your words are a treasure. There's gotta be some way to die. I just need to die harder. All these old guys on the wall. Who lives here? Callista Flockhart? Carrying three feet off the ground to snatch up the nearest muffin crumb? The news, live here at a breaking news situation. Come quietly, or there will be trouble. You stole that from Robocop. That's from Robocop. Is there like a sorting hat? My superpower is just unbridled cancer. Give me a bow and arrow, I'm basically Hawkeye. What did I do to piss off a grumpy old f***er with a winter soldier on? Who are you? <laughs> 
I'm Batman. We are so dark! Do you say you're not from the DC Universe? In every film, there's a moment when the hero hits rock bottom. In Cool Runnings, it was when John Candy's prize bobsled broke. In Human Centipede, it was when those people signed on to be in that movie. Hands off that kid, John Connor! Give me your best shot, one-eyed Willie. Oh god, that hurts. Suck it, Mel Gibson. Zip it, Thanos. We have a deal. Hey, big guy. The sun's getting real low. I want some water. I bet you do, Brown Panther. Build a statue for me. He's gonna go straight to jail if we name him Earl. I'm just trying to be a better person. My name is Earl. I love you. I know. Say it. Say what you said every time you tortured me! Say it! I just wanna hang out! No big deal! No, you're doing what comes naturally. Still they're happy as can be, doing what comes naturally. Four or five moments! Great moments are born from great opportunity. No capes! This is the end. Start. I don't feel so good. It was my fault. She died. 